So the OpenAI saga is over. You know the story. Sam Altman is unexpectedly kicked out from OpenAI by the board. Everybody at Microsoft, VCs, and potentially some pretty powerful members of the U.S. government step in and turn the screws on members of the board. At the same time, some leaks come out about QSTAR a potential breakthrough in AI that may be a threat to humanity. And this is like two days in. On the third day, Sam Altman is resurrected. He is risen back to being the CEO of OpenAI. When asked about QSTAR, he doesn't give any details, but seemingly confirms that this was indeed a leak from OpenAI. He says that was an unfortunate leak. Now, in the background of all of this, there's rumors of big money out of the Middle East, potentially funding Sam Altman to develop microchips for AI to compete with NVIDIA. Now, details are coming out about this chip and what had transpired. I think this will be in the history books. Because as you're about to see, these weren't events that happened in some building in San Francisco. This involved global forces. And as you'll see in a second, it seems like this deal was axed by the U.S. government. So really fast, let's back up just a little bit. About four months ago, we did a video on this channel talking about how an Australian research team was trying to figure out how to create microchips that were as smart, as fast, and as energy efficient as the human brain. So what they did was is they meshed computer chips with parts of a human brain. They added human neurons on top of a microchip. So this is kind of a representation of that. So these are living brain cells. It's a combination of human neurons and rat neurons that slowly over time learn to play Pong. So as you can see here in this game visualizer, it's learning to block the ball and kind of battle it back. The way they do that is they, they give positive and negative reinforcement to those brain cells. You can think of it like playing classical music if it does something right or hitting it with static if it does something wrong. Now, of course, someone out there decides to replicate this experiment and see if they can teach it to play, if they can teach it to play Doom. Now, the reason that that's important is because we have this idea that the human brains are better, faster, they use less energy than, than computers do. So we're using GPUs from NVIDIA, for example, to teach AI and to run inference, meaning have it answer questions, etc. And the neural nets, the thing that, that powers this AI, that powers ChatGPT and the various AI art models, a lot of the things out of DeepMind, you know, they're called neural nets. And they're very similar to the neural net in our brain. Our brains are neural nets. But they're kind of this abstraction of our brain that exists in the digital world, in the computer. It's basically a digital brain inside a computer. But inside a computer, it's kind of an abstraction because at the end, we build computer chips to be just processing units. It comes down to ones and zeros. So here's a, an interview of Gordon Wilson, CEO of Rain Neuromorphic. So when they're talking about neuromorphic chips, they're talking about, let's call them computer chips that are less like a computer and more like the human brain. They're not digital. They're more analog. Instead of ones and zeros, instead of like strict this or that, they're more of a gradient, more of a spectrum. So here it says, Rain Neuromorphics has built a neuromorphic chip that is analog. In other words, it does not simulate neural networks. It is a neural network in analog, not digital. It's a physical collection of neurons and synapses, as opposed to an abstraction of neurons and synapses. Synapse, synapse, however you want to pronounce that. That means no ones and zeros of traditional computing, but voltages and currents that represent the mathematical operations you want to perform. And it sounds like it's a thousand times more energy efficient than existing neural networks. So keep in mind, this company that's doing it, they're called RAIN Neuromorphics, or just RAIN. And so RAIN is based less than a mile from OpenAI's headquarters in San Francisco, their neighbors. And it's working on a chip it calls a neuromorphic processing unit, or the NPU. So you have NVIDIA's graphical processing unit, GPUs. Google, I believe, has tensor units. This is yet another way of approaching it called neuromorphic processing unit, NPU, designed to replicate the features of the human brain. And in 2019, OpenAI signed a non-binding agreement to spend $51 million on the chips when they became available. So in other words, they want to buy it from Rain, the maker or the developer, the researcher of these chips. And Rain did disclose this to investors. Sounds like Sam Altman personally invested more than 1 million into the company. So basically these microchips, they're kind of like the new oil. The whole world wants to get their hands on them, US, China, and everybody else. Because we're realizing that these are 
really good for creating these AIs, not only for training them, for developing them, but also for running inference, the outputs that make them so useful. And interestingly enough, like all of these chips, like 96% or some crazy high number like that, they're made in Taiwan. They're made in this one small region. They're all made right here. And it's like 50, 100 miles. It's a, it's a 40 minute boat ride from mainland China. And the Chinese stance is that Taiwan is part of China. So China says, this is part of China. And everybody else is like, no, it's not. And China's like, Yes, it is. And now that this is producing all the world's chips, as you can imagine, there's a lot of conflict. There are a lot of eyes on this area. A lot of people are kind of concerned. Not that long ago, U.S. introduced a U.S. chip act trying to get U.S. companies to develop these microchips elsewhere. A lot of big tech firms started going that direction. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, etc. So when I heard that perhaps Sam Altman is trying to develop his own chips, it was kind of like, that made sense. There's a deficit. They're very expensive. Everybody wants more. What I don't think anybody realized was that Sam Altman wasn't just trying to create a competitor. He was trying to create that next level chip that might just put everyone else out of business, that neuromorphic processing unit, NPU. And so Rain, the company that's trying to produce these chips, so they're founded in 2017. They claim that the brain-inspired NPUs, neuromorphic processing units, will yield potentially 100 times more computing power and for training 10,000 times greater energy efficiency than GPUs, which if that is true, that would mean that if I'm doing my math right, GPT-4, which people were estimating probably cost something like 60 million to train using NVIDIA's chips, and and more recently probably would cost more like 20 million with the GPUs that are coming out. Well, this would mean that you're able to train GPT-4 for $2,000, which it's kind of hard to even imagine. Like, what does that mean, right? The the world's most advanced AI, the cost, you know, a year ago, 60 million to train. And I, I believe months of training right now is going to be days or weeks to train and cost $2,000 to train. Now, again, keep in mind that this, you know, these guys are trying to get funding, right? They're trying to get people to fund them. So that's their claims. That's what they're saying could be, which again, it sounds like they don't have these chips made yet. They have an idea. They have their claims. They're trying to raise money. So this could be complete nonsense. But if true, it would completely change kind of this global tech landscape. And so Rain at one point has claimed to investors that had held advanced talks to sell systems to Google, Oracle, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon. Microsoft declined to comment and everybody else did not respond. So we covered this a few days ago. So according to Matthew Pines on Twitter, and by the way, so this new article that just came out that we're looking at from Wired, this kind of confirms a lot of what he's been talking about. He has been covering this for most of November. I think a lot of these posts are from November 17th, November 19th, but a lot of these new details that are coming out, they seem to suggest that a lot of the stuff that he was posting is in fact correct. Or at least we have more and more confirmation and sources and clues that a lot of this is in fact correct. And so Altman has been looking to raise tens of billions of dollars from Middle East sovereign wealth funds. So for example, the United Arab Emirates, there's a lot of money in that area of the world. A lot of it was made from oil, from energy, and they're looking to diversify away from that. They're looking for the brand new technologies in which they can invest their money. So they're looking at electric cars, they're looking at batteries, they're looking at microchips, they're looking at AI. They're looking for that next big wave, right? As the sort of the energy economy based off oil. I mean, they're seeing a need to divest away from that and diversify into these new waves of technology. So it seems like Sam Altman was going around the world, meeting with a lot of people out of China and out of the UAE. And so there seems to be this large fund called the Mubadala that's out of the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, that has a lot of money from the Middle East, as well as certain e-commerce giants like JD.com. And in his world tour, Sam Altman was meeting with a lot of people in the UAE, as well as giving talks in China, that might have been a remote lecture that he did. And so Altman was looking to raise tens of billions from Middle Eastern Sovereign Wealth Fund, as well as Masayoshi Sun from SoftBank to make AI-oriented hardware in partnership with former Apple designer Johnny Eve, Johnny Ive. So this is from The Verge in September 28th. Details emerge of Johnny, I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce that name, Ive. Johnny Ive and OpenAI's plan to build the iPhone of artificial intelligence. The project aims to create a more natural way to interact with AI fueled by over $1 billion in funding from SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Sun. By the way, the those brain chips, the RAINS NPUs, they're based in an open source architecture 
that's endorsed by Google and Qualcomm and other tech companies. And they're aimed at what the tech industry calls edge devices. So these are phones, drones, cars, and robots. So these would be incredibly effective at having AI in these small standalone technology devices. So in your phone, in your Roomba, in your car, and a drone that's flying around. Now you may have heard that there is a powerful large language model out of the Middle East. And so here's a quote about that. So Abu Dhabi has launched a new version of its Falcon model. So it's that AI that's the Arabic language large language model. And it's claimed to be more powerful, more than twice as powerful as Meta's Llama 2. And so G42, so remember that name, G42, a company controlled by the UAE's national security advisor, Sheikh Tahnoun bin Zaid al Nahyan, which has cooperated with China on vaccines and laboratory testing. So that's the company behind Falcon. It says here the US officials are expanding effort to lure the Gulf states away from China. So they're trying to keep these players in the Middle East and China kind of separated. But a lot of these groups that we're talking about here, they're kind of they're kind of merged together. So they have ties to United Arab Emirates, they have ties to China, etc. And so this G42, the name is drawn from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is an excellent book. And you're going to hear a lot of references to it because part of that story was that they developed this supercomputer, right? And it was supposed to answer the biggest life question, the answer to life, the universe, and everything, right? And so so that model goes to, to work and it takes many, many years. And so on the day that it's supposed to give the answer to the question, right? So there's this huge celebration, everybody's gathered outside and sort of the researchers go in to talk to this supercomputer and they're like, all right, great model. Tell us what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. I'm describing this from memory from reading this book many, many years ago. So I apologize if I get some of the facts incorrect, but the point is, so the model says, well, the answer is 42. And so the researchers are like, well, what do you mean 42? It's like, well, that's the answer to life, the universe and everything. The answer is 42. So the researchers are getting kind of nervous, right? Because it's like the whole world is gathered outside waiting for the answer. Everybody's been awaiting this with this religious fervor. And so they're kind of going, uh, I think we're about to get lynched, right? Because we can't go out there and say, well, the answer is 42. Like, that's not what everybody was looking forward to. But anyways, they kind of prod the, the computer further and says, well, maybe you need to know what the question is. Like, here's the answer, but what is the question? And they go, okay, fine, tell us, what is the question? It says, well, in order to answer the question, I will have to create a far greater supercomputer that would take even longer to figure this stuff out, and that will be, be able to give you the question. Which I think the reason you're hearing more and more about this book from 1979 is that it seems to kind of maybe a little bit predicted some of the stuff that's happening in AI right now. It does seem like to answer the biggest life questions, we will have to let AI design the next generation of AI to answer those questions. And I think that's why, I mean, they've said that's why they're naming this company as G42. Anyways, before we continue, you have to know what the CFIUS is, and it's the Committee on Foreign Investments in the United States. And it has the authority to review certain transactions involving foreign investments in the United States in order to determine the effects of such transactions on the national security of the United States. Have you heard about them before? And so the CFIUS has been long concerned about China gaining access to advanced U.S. superconductors and has been grown increasingly worried about China using intermediaries in the Middle East. So here's a article out of Financial Times, Saudi-China collaboration raises concerns about access to AI chips. And so as this storm of global money is uh, circling these two little Bay Area companies, right? You have Prosperity 7, a unit of Aramco Ventures. So Aramco is the state-owned Saudi company that's built on energy, on oil, worth probably trillions of dollars. It's You can buy stocks in it. It's publicly traded, but I think like only a tiny portion of it is publicly traded. So it's hard to know how big it is exactly, but it's probably massive. Trillions of dollars. You also have various Chinese companies that are potentially involved in this. So Rain received a small seed investment from the venture unit of Chinese search engine Baidu, apparently without problems, but the larger Saudi investment attracted significant concerns. A spokesperson for the CFIUS, you know, they review hundreds of deals, but they never comment on anything. And so they come in and they require a full divestment from Rain. So they came in and they said, we need all this foreign money out. And three attorneys who regularly work on sensitive deals say they could not recall any previous Saudi Arabian deals fully blocked by this U.S. organization. Divestment itself has been quite rare over the past 20 years and has largely been a remedy reserved for Chinese investors. So I found an interview with Gordon Wilson, the 
I guess, ex-CEO of Rain Neuromorphics. I believe he stepped down very recently and uh, had someone else take over because he thought that would be better for the company as a whole. But here he's talking about how they're trying to build basically artificial brains with a neuromorphic chip. I do encourage people to check out the full interview on this YouTube channel, John Koitzier. He's got the full interview, so it looks like it's 26 minutes long. But it is interesting to see how closely the U.S. government seems to be monitoring a lot of this, these AI developments. They're very cautious about where these microchips are going, who's getting their hands on them. They're preventing companies like NVIDIA from exporting the, the very powerful chips to certain foreign countries. And more and more, it seems like that this AI and the coming of AGI, that's seen as the, the new atomic bomb, perhaps, this great mythical weapon that's being developed, and the microchips as the new oil. It's the fuel that we need to build all this, to all make all this happen. And in 2021, Rain Neuromorphics, so they presented kind of a prototype of what that chip would look like. And they're saying it's very brain-like, honestly, and we are quite proud of that. So this is the Rain CTO, Jack Kendall. It's the same architecture as axons and dendrites in the brain. We don't think you can get much better than this. So I guess this is kind of what that would look like inside. Anyways, these are crazy times we live in. Let me know what you think. One thing that some of you may not be aware of is this channel is actually fairly global in the sense that last last time I checked about, I think 36% of the traffic came from the US. So I just checked my analytics. So 38% of the traffic is from the United States. The next biggest is 6% from the UK and it gets smaller from there. So, so this is spread out over a lot of different countries. So I'm curious what you think about what we just talked about here. This does involve a lot of countries, whether you're from US, Europe, the Middle East, or Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Russia. The events that are happening here will kind of send shockwaves across the whole world. I've briefly lived in San Francisco for about a year of my life. It's a little bit weird to me to understand that like these two buildings aren't that far apart. Most of the AI talent and development is happening in a, in a very small area of land. So wherever in the world you are, I'd love to know what you think about this. Do you agree with what the U.S. government did? Are you okay with what Sam Altman's doing? Do you think he's making the right moves that will benefit the greatest number of people? Or do you think that maybe he's being a little bit reckless? But whatever else you can say, it does sound like there are a lot of eyes on OpenAI from all over the world. People are watching this drama unfold. But yeah, either way, fun times ahead. Definitely feels like the world is accelerating and kind of centralizing. We're all seeing these things unfold almost real time in front of our eyes from any corner of the world. And it's almost surreal. Anyways, my name is Wes Roth. Thank you.